Greetings, family, and once again, welcome to Ask Us Anything, episode nine. Yes, the all-important number nine. You know the significance of that number nine. So this is a special, special episode. Always looking forward to um, answering the questions, um, doing our best to answer the questions. I am a humble student of the master teacher, Parnabab Yanun. Dr. Malachi Z. York. And um, yeah, today's episode nine. We're going to get into your questions. But before we do, um, for some of the newcomers or people that may not be aware of what Wu Sabat is, I always like to um, give, you know, a small intro. So Wu Sabat is our culture, right? The original culture on this planet. Um, from the original people, and some refer to as the African people. When you're dealing with races, the Africans will be the root race, um, and all others come by way of the genetics or the genealogy of the African. However, um, you have to remember that this is one planet in a solar system in one galaxy, in one universe of many solar systems and many galaxies and many universes and to a point where you're dealing with the multiverses and the omniverses. So life forms began in their original places and some of those life forms um, then came to Earth, right? So. It's a matter of knowing that, yes, there are other beings that have come from somewhere else to this planet after this planet was seeded and mixed with those beings or took the genetics of things or beings that were evolving already on this planet to create hybrids of themselves. So you have to, because remember, you're dealing with an environment, right? Uh, Earth is a, it's a biosphere. It's got different atmospheres within it so you know you have beings that are in the waters you have beings that are on land you have beings that are in the air you have beings that are in the sky and you have tiny tiny beings that may be insignificant to you um, and and we can go all the way to bacteria, and you know so even to diseases and you know things that are actually alive you know um, in the cells so it's important to realize when we talk about life that there are different types of life forms. But um, when we're talking about a humanoid, um, yes, other beings have come here, but they have to still utilize what can exist in this atmosphere. And, and so recreating or adding to what was already grown on this planet. Um, it's actually interesting because we posted um, a video a recent video, um, me talking about the master teacher being Thoth or Tahuti. And um, yeah, because I was dressed a bit casual, the comments are actually really funny. Um, but it was to show that, and some people said, oh, be professional, why are you not wearing your normal garments? And we have to emphasize to people that normal peers are professionals in all fields and walks of life. And we are not like this 24-7, 365 days in a year, you know. Um, we do do other things. We do have other interests and, um, you know, so don't be, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm like everybody else, you know. We go out, we do things. So that was quite interesting to see the comments that people were making just because I wore a cap and a jacket. Some people went as far as said, oh, the money must be rolling in. Now, this, this is nothing. I mean, those clothes, you can see other videos where I've actually had that, that jacket and that hat on, so it's funny. But what was actually really interesting was the comments on the fact that people are saying that, oh, um, it's propaganda, I'm saying, about Parnabab Yanun, Dr. Malachi Z, York being Tahuti. What's funny about that is, even with the brothers that I mentioned, right, that's the Terence Howard, your Bill Carson and Cat Williams, 
even Kanye West and other people that are are great thinkers in terms of their visionaries and what they're talking about today. You have to realize Dr. York and Wu Sabat and Wu Nuwap, if that's the term you re, you refer you you know it by. Dr. York is like 30, 40, 50 years ahead of all these newcomers, right? So it's not surprising that he puts out information, and information that he put out in the 70s, 80s, 90s, it's information that people are putting out today. So when we say he's Tahuti, or Thoth, the author of the Emerald Tablets, or a reincarnation of that being, we are, we're, we're dropping information that maybe other people are going to catch up with later on. Because information that he was putting out 30, 40 years ago is what people are speaking on now. And anyone who has been reading the books will attest to this, right? And not only if you look at the works, and I would go as far as saying, we've beat you to it. Because I've said it first and I've, I've said that he is thought or Tahuti. You're saying he's not, and I'm sure other people are going to try and I'll, I'll be like, you. the onus is on you to say or prove that what I'm saying is not true. And people might present other people saying they, they claim that title. But with any title, it's not about the title, it's about the works, it's about the evidence, it's about what have you done to prove who you are. And as I said in that video, Dr. York being a prolific writer, and he has written, and I'm just going to show just a few scrolls. So as well as giving us Wu Sabat, on his way, he had to clean up and correct all the information that other people were subscribing to. And I would go as far as saying that there's no one dead or alive right now who has done the works. Let me give you an example. Um, you have scrolls like this. Look how thick this is, right? Thousands of pages. This is the degree of Christism. This one book pretty much covers everything you would ever need to know about Christianity as, uh, you know, as, a, as a religion or whatever. You've also got another one, the degree of Mosism. Again, look at the size of this. Right? Um, you got the coming forth by day, right? What people refer to as the book of the dead. Hardcover, yeah? Because some people like to say, oh, he only writes little pamphlets and um, dealing with the smaller scrolls. But that was intentional because you have to start reading the small things. And then as your mind expounds, you start to read bigger and more thicker books. Hardcover. Right? Um, that's the Quran. You've got Holy Jew. It's what people call the Book of Revelations. All right? Then you have the, all of these hard covers, right? The Psalms, the Book of Psalms, what people call the Psalms of David. You have the Torah, big, thick, yeah? Big, thick, covered hard-covered books and circle seven yeah the holy quran circle seven as well as the holy tablets which a lot of people speak about in addition you have the black book sacred records of atom ray and the list goes on and on and on so when we say he is a scribe and a prolific author, that's just a small sample and the size of information and books that we're talking about. So we will see how people catch up because like I say, name me, anybody else who has done the works, the likeness of the works of this great writer, all right? So yeah, that's actually quite quite interesting, like the comments. But we'll see. But um, 
we, are, we give you the opportunity to ask questions and, um, you know, ask us anything. And you can even ask us questions that we can put to Dr. York directly. So, um, yeah, I hope that clears that up. So, yeah, going back to today and remember this, <laughs> we have a documentary that's going to blow you away that's been worked on. And we're waiting for you to subscribe and reach 100,000 subscribers. So share these videos, get other people to subscribe, and we are going to drop that documentary. Look at the comments, that's what we've been saying to people. When we get to 100,000, you're gonna unlock so much because we're gonna drop the documentary and as well as give away so much and also launch new platforms right so help us to help you by subscribing sharing getting other people to share and and you know each one teach one that's all you have to do share the information you know because we are living in a different paradigm right now there's a shift in consciousness and you can see now the people that are coming through like our, the, the brothers i've mentioned they're thinking on a global perspective, they're thinking on how we save this planet. They're thinking on things that are beyond people, places and things. They're, they're talking and thinking about solving the problems of the world. Like everyone should be able to live, um, you know, without, you know, the, the, the problems we have on the planet. Like free or energy should be available. Um, there shouldn't be hunger, there shouldn't be all these diseases. Um, so there are people now that are thinking on the level of humanity. Yeah, that's what you will see on our website, unitedsabiansworldwide.com. Yeah, no one wins the race in racism. So we have to transcend these things that are holding us back, like racism, like inequalities, like injustices. You know, we have to get to a point where utopia, yeah, it's real. You know, something that is achievable when you start to eliminate the, the greed, the, you know, the, the things that people, the constructs like money and things that are holding people back, you know, because if we have the opportunity for everyone to be fed, everyone to have a roof over their head, everyone to live peacefully, then we can focus those energies on on our minds, on doing things that are going to help humanity, you know, you can focus on projects that just make life much better for everyone. And this is what Wu Sabat is really about. The essence of Wu Sabat is love and unity. It's about peace, it's about truth at the end of the day. And, you know, the, the master teacher always says, truth is truth. And if something is true, nothing can really stand against it because it, it has no association with anyone or anything else. So I hope that's given you a little taste of what Wu Sabat is about. Um, you can also go back and watch all our videos on OSM Vision and, you know, subscribe as we keep saying. The more you interact, the more you help us to reach that 100K, we will unlock so much more for you. So without further ado, let us, um, let us look at the questions for this week. It's always a surprise because I actually don't know what questions are going to come up. So let's have a look. Okay. Um, how did melanated people even get in this position? What did we do? I, I, I guess... Um, I guess by in this position, please, when you ask questions, try and be as clear as possible because when you say this position, you haven't said what position you're talking about. But I'm going to try and read between the lines and um, I, I, I think you might mean that what is perceived as us maybe not being in the most favorable position, but that's again something that is an illusion because when you don't see a full picture of something, it's easy to think that the little piece that you're seeing 
is the full picture. So what I mean by that is when you say this position, I, I would really like to know what that means because if you want to look at every endeavor on the planet, right, we excel. Um, the one thing that is holding us back is the unification because there has been a concentrated effort to strip us of who we are, to keep us divided, utilizing tools such as religion, because religion has you thinking you're different and you have to follow a particular book or a particular person. And then if you don't, you're condemned. And not only that, but with us, we know our roots is in Africa, but a lot of people in the West, especially in the diaspora, are, have been made to be disconnected from their brothers around the world. And this is an illusion which makes you think you're separate, but really, by your genetics, by your DNA, by your vibration, you are all, we are all connected. Now, if you're talking about economic power, there is a, a, a situation with mismanagement because you are under the illusion that the wealth or what is perceived as wealth is of value, but the real value as in, you know, having money and so on, right? The real value is in the things that they use to generate the money. This is why I'm saying the picture you may have may be flawed because if you go to Africa, you would say the creator, with whatever label you want to use to attribute to him, her, is selective because he put all the riches that make the Western um, world wealthy in Africa. This is all the cobalt, the gold, the platinum, the oil, the silver, and we can go on and on and on, and it's, it's abundant in Africa. So the process by deception is what makes black people think they're not wealthy. Even your, your composition in terms of the melanin in your body is very conducive to live on the planet, to live under the sun. And melanin is now one of the most, if not the most, um, valuable commodity. So when you say, how did melanated people even get in this position? What did we do? You have to realize there was a concentrated effort, particularly in the last, in the last 6,000 years, but more concentrated in the, in the 1400 and the 1600, where there's a deception known as the slave trade, which wasn't a trade because there wasn't anything in exchange for value. It was a kidnapping and a constructed agenda to strip and separate. That's what the word Africa means from the word um, Farka or Afrikia, Farka, which, which is dealing with to divide. And that's what they did. They divided and chopped up Africa with the Berlin Conference. And you're talking about, when I say they, the Europeans and foreign invaders, you know, that came into the land of Africa. And so there's a, a, a misconception that we are the lowest and don't have anything. But like I said, if you go into every endeavor, whether it's sports, music, um, around the world, people are recognizing that melanated people are very blessed, if you want to use that word. So now all it takes, and this is what's happening now. So in the last 6,000 years, known as the the moon cycle. Coincidentally, this is when the Adamite, the hybrid, was genetically bred, right, and created. And according to their books, in the Bible, it was it was said that they were given dominion for six thousand years. And I've explained in prior videos that a lot of things that were that have been happening on this planet were experiments. So. One of the experiments was to see how they could breed out the devil out of, you know, these beings. And so they were given a 6,000 year time period to, to try and breed out this evil, right? And 
And that was also coincidentally during the moon cycle. Um, and again, I've explained what the moon cycle is previously because you have cycles um, in time. And so even though 6,000 years may seem like a very long time, even according to their own records, they like a thousand, uh, a day is like unto a thousand years. You can look, look this up in Second Peter's. So really, if a day is a thousand years, so really what we're calling 6,000 years, it's only uh, six days. <laughs> and that ties in with the, you know, the six days of creation. Um, and so what we're basically saying is that during that period, they were given dominion to name everything. That's why everything that, is a, that you see around you is named by the Adamites. Um, and within the Adamites, there are different species or different types. Okay, so, um, and what they did is monitor to see if they were going to treat the rest, the rest of the world peacefully. And, and they've realized that, no, all they, they've done, the Adamites have done in the last 6,000 years, is bring the planet to a state that is almost completely destroyed. And also... The racism, the hate, the wars, the murders, all of these things haven't helped humanity. In fact, they've stifled our growth. So now, you know, a judgment was passed um, in the year 2000 that no more extension is going to be um, forwarded to them. So now those that are causing the planet to be in a state of chaos, unrest, have to go. And this is happening through natural selection, through mother nature, through natural nature just evolving and shifting in terms of dimension. I know I've gone on because your, your question wasn't very clear in terms of how did melanated people even get in this position? What did we do? Um, we didn't do anything but basically get put into amnesia or the spell of sleep. And that's why after that 6,000 years of allotted time, which has now expired as of the year 2000 AD, you're waking back up and the, the, the consciousness of people is rising. This is why Wu Sabat is here. This is why the master teacher, Parna Babianun, Dr. Malachi Ziyuk, has come to basically, he's come with healing in his wings, as you can find in the books of Malachi chapter 4 in the Old Testament. So this is the time. See, sometimes we can focus on the negative as opposed to the, the positive. Um, and, you know, you get the notion of it's a glass half empty or half full. It's how you choose to look at things. This is a fantastic opportunity. We're in a, a, a time now where we're actually living to see the change. You know, um, it's, it's, an, it's a nine or six, or do you choose to see a six as a nine? Nine is what I choose to see is 9 for being. This is the ninth episode, and there's a lot of positive things happening. What we need to do is to unite and work together. And the best person qualified by the forces of nature to finish this job and bring us back to our original state as supreme beings, not just by lip service, but by actual works, you know, putting out the information, transforming people's lives. Um, and that's what Dr. York has done. And so that's what you need to do. You need to ask yourself, instead of pointing the finger at other people, is what are you doing daily? Um, what's your contributions? What's your piece of the puzzle that you have that you're bringing to put this entire puzzle together? Are you, are you one of those that is a part of the problem? Are you a part of the solution? And this, these are questions you need to ask yourself. And if you're part of the solution, then you need to start studying. And, you know, there's no shortcuts around you studying. We all had to do it. And I, and I am still studying. We're all still studying. Because he coined the phrase, Dr. York coined the phrase of taking you on a long, on a long journey on a short path. Yeah, the long journey is all the information you have to assimilate. Yeah. And the short path is the time you have to accumulate this information. Um, no one's going to do it for you. Yes, you can get it 
from watching videos and so on, but you have to study, you have to read. Um, and if you can't read, that's a completely different thing, but you can learn. Um, so the question is, what are you doing on a daily basis? Are you emanating that positivity, that energy? Are you doing things to help build? Are you sharing the information? Are you studying to become, you know, we're scientists by nature. Are you fulfilling your purpose? And don't let the ego get in the way, you know, be humble enough to recognize and know when um, a teacher is able to teach you. And that's what we all had to do. Like Dr. York can humble anyone on this planet in less than five, I would say five seconds. Well, be generous in a minute and listen to the YouTube that he, um, recordings that he has put out. So the question is, what are you doing to make this world a better place? All right, and then take the steps, join us. Go to unitedsabeansworldwide.com and you see we're, we're here to work with anyone and everyone who is about bringing about this positive change. Go to nashat.co.uk and join us. Let's, let's get this work done, let's get it done. All right, let's move on. Benin, Africa's president, has given all African-American people the right to come to the country to get citizenship as long as you can prove it. Um, should we as African-Americans go since we need to unite or is this a trick? And thanks so much for all you amazing people do get all this information out. I just found you a couple of weeks ago and my mind is blown. I finally feel like I'm on the right track. Okay, that's positive. Right, so this, the initiative, um, actually Dr. York was quite instrumental in starting this initiative of, you know, inviting people from the diaspora to go back home because as you know, um, there was the Ghanaian exodus, if you like, where that same um, invitation was open and a lot of people took it. Um, the reality is that ultimately we um, as Musbatu, which is um, the word for us as, as, as uh, Nuwapians or Sabians, we know who the guide is for us and that is Parnabab Yanuno, Dr. Malakai Ziyok. So we wait, we are patient to wait for instructions of what to do and when to do it because we've been walking with him for many, many years. So we know that you can't walk ahead of the master. He doesn't want you to walk behind him either. You know, we walk with him side by side. And so, yes, if you choose that Africa or somewhere in Africa is going to give you a better lifestyle, and that's something you want to do because, you know, when you compare the benefits from being here in the Western Hemisphere to being in Africa in terms of the weather, the food, um, the, the liberties, the freedom that you have, you know, uh, even in terms of buying property um, and Africa's underdeveloped in certain areas where your skills from here can actually take you very far over there. So these are all decisions that you need to make for yourself. So yes, um, if, if you feel it's a good thing for you, that's down to you. But we, as Musbatu, Sabians, we move collectively because you get more done. It's just the logistics and the practicality of it makes more sense to move together because, um, it, you know, it's like they say, um, many hands make light work. And if we were going over there, we're not trying to go over there with hand me up, give me something. We're going over there with, we're here, we can contribute. We've got all of these skills we can build. We can bring so much more to help and not just coming to take like most of the, you know, the Western um, countries that go over there to, to rape and, and just take and take and take. You know, we, we, they, they go and take and leave the people, you know, destitute when those people are us, that's our family. So we have to have the mindset to move together and we will be able to bring more and do more. So, um, you know, we, we don't dictate to people what to do, but 
it makes sense and logical sense to wait, um, especially if, you know, we're not going to abandon the master teacher. You know, some people do like to run ahead and want to do things, but some people have been given the permission to go ahead and start to make preparations. So, you know, it's entirely up to you in terms of what you choose to do. Um, and, and I'm happy that we've made a big difference to you since you started listening to us. Do you have any connections with the YouTuber, the young elder, or know of his videos on Dr. Zio? Yeah, the young elder, um, I, I know of the brother. He, um, I don't know him personally. I mean, I know of his channel. I was aware when he first came on the scene. In fact, I supported him by buying um, a couple of the books that he put out. And he's never said anything bad about the master teacher. In fact, he supports him. Um, however, um, I don't know him personally. And um, what, what I would say is that um, I don't know how close he is with, within the family. Um, but yeah, I, know, I do know of his content. Um, and he, he puts out a lot of information of the master teacher. Now, you would have to, obviously, or we would have to speak to him or have a conversation to know, you know, how, um, what transpires after you put out the information. Are you helping? Are you involved in the intricacies of, you know, the family, um, within the family? Um, but yeah, the representation, if you're representing, you know, the master teacher, Dr. York, then it's got to be, um, it should be as best as possible. And um, yeah, you should be working from the inside out um, and not the outside in as a lot of people try to do. Um, so yes, um, to answer the question, it, we, the connection we have is that he recognizes um, the spiritual guide and the spiritual teacher and master and that's the link between all of us, those of us who bear witness to this being. Um, so yes, I'm aware of who the young elder is. Um, I have heard that Jesus was never real but a archetype. Then I heard you mention three Jesuses. Can you speak on what you know about the Jesus people worship and pray to? I understand that you said the three have been mixed up in the biblical stories. Yes, so um, I also, I think the last video, the last episode, I explained about how you can take a character or develop a character and, and it could just be a drawing from your, your mind. And then that character evolves over time. I think I gave the example of Mickey Mouse and Superman and you know all the superheroes that you can think of that went from being drawings into comic books, into animation, into cartoons, into blockbuster movies with the latest sophisticated technology to the point where you watching Superman, you really believe and think that he can fly, you know, and, um, you know, Iron Man, whatever. So when you take that now and you superimpose it with the other characters like your father Christmas, your Jesus, your, your Abraham, your Moses, all these characters, they've been given life from taking a story, a real life story that has been remixed over and over and over and over again throughout different cultures and different um, languages and different areas. And to the point where if you were born in the last 2,000 to 6,000 years, you believe these stories as if they are real until you start to do a bit of digging and you realize that if we take Christianity, for example, all, mon all the monotheistic religions, the Abrahamic religions, are born out of ancient Egypt and ancient Sumer, right? So the, the, the whole God, um, the devil, humanity, then you have Jesus and Mary, all of these can be found in cultures before, especially from Egypt. So, you know, you got Osiris, so you got Ra as a god, you got Osiris with his brother Seth. So Osiris will be the god character that has been 
copied over into the, to the Bible. And then you'll have his wife, Isis, and their son, Horus. Seth, being the brother of Osiris, would, is depicted as being the devil. And that story has been remixed and remixed and remixed to the point where now you'll have um, God the Father, which would be, as I said, your Osiris. Then you'll have Mary, Isis. Then you'll have Jesus, which they've taken from Horus. Now, I'm using those terms, but you could say, instead of um, Osiris, Isis, which are Greek names or renditions, Horus, you can say um, Asa, yeah, Hara, and Aset. Or you can say Haru, or Asaru, yeah, Asaru, Haru, or Har, and, you know, Ashtat. But you can go to the Sumerian texts, um, and you see that same story just being broken down as the Muzi being the father, Tammuz being the son, and then Ishtar, you know. Um, and, and so what, what I'm basically saying is that in the Bible, there are three characters. In fact, if you do some research, you have Josephus Flavius Piso. He actually wrote the play that took these ancient stories and he wrote the New Testament. Right, this is all broken down in our book, um, Fast Track Your Spiritual and Conscious Journey, with pictures and everything. Right, and these characters from the play that he wrote, and his family played the different parts in the play. And so, the three Jesus's characters are the one that people say is Yahshua. All right, remember, we've already broken down the language barrier in terms of. You can't make up the word Jesus with the J because if you're going to the Hebrew, there are no J's or V's, right? So the Yahshua character would be the main character. Then you will have um, the son of Jesus, right? Known as Bar Jesus. The word Bar is, mis is left untranslated. So people think it's an English word, but it's actually from the Hebrew. Bar means son which ties into like bin or ibn when you're telling with son and even ben as in from the Egyptian ben ben, right? This is where they're getting that from. So you have Yahshua, then you have Bar Jesus, and then there's a third character, yeah, who is the son of Mark Antony and Cleopatra, known as Cleophas, right? These three, we actually have a book called um, the three Jesuses or the Trinity, I can't remember the exact title, where this is broken down. So you will, you will see that when you start to analyse, if you analyse the stories from a character point of view, like, a, like if you're looking at a character in a play or a character in a story, because writers will tell you they evolve a character, yeah? You will see that the characters are different. They don't match up. You know, but yeah, so that's what I was referring to when I said about the, um, the three Jesuses. Um, so they've mixed all their three stories. So one went to India and he was studying and talking and teaching the Kabbalah. Um, and, you know, he got killed. Then you have the, I remember in the context of the story, then you have the other one, the main one that supposedly got hanged on the cross. But when you read other scriptures that are left out of the Bible and you read the Quran and other books that um, came after or complement the books, because it, it, it ties in, you know, they would tell you that Jesus wasn't crucified because he had the power to transfigure himself. And he transfigured himself to look like, um, like Ju Judas, okay? Um, because if you follow the story of Judas, it doesn't make sense as well because they t tell you that he went and hung himself. And they give you the, he went. So who was watching him get a rope, put it on his neck and hang himself from a tree? So there are many, many loopholes in the story. Yeah. Um, so yes, I mean, that book, um, the one I mentioned before, let me just pick that up again. This, um, this book here, like I mentioned, classic, maybe very hard to get hold of. This actually gives you that, the entire story of the three characters, one of them ended up being buried in the Vatican. 
and so much stuff. So, so yes, yeah, so those three characters are the ones that I was referring to. Okay. Um, speak on what you know about Jesus' people worshipping. Yeah, so, so people have now been given a story that they worship and believe it's real when it's not. So you have to, you have to trace the story back to the roots and that's why they stop you from connecting back to ancient Egypt. And they will say the Egyptians are pagans and, you know, don't connect back to Egypt. Why? Because as a, a Negroid, you can look on the walls of Egypt, you can, you can identify with Egypt being your ancestors. It's written on the walls and there, there are hieroglyphics and there, there is writing about all of these stories. You know, the whole story of Osiris and, and, and Seth and, you know, the whole story has been basically plagiarized into, you know, the modern religions. And then you get more and more remixes. So the Quran picks up where the Old Test um, the New Testament, and it talks about, you know, um, you know, they go and talk about Isa, but same story, you know. So let me move on because a um, lot of questions to get through. Can you take a brisk dive into Gnosticism? Also, its connection with masonry. Also, can you expand on some of the Gnostic beliefs of Jesus and pedophilia rituals? Why are the most powerful and most influential people connected to pedophilia? Yes, um, right, so you're talking about the Gnostic. Gnostic um, this is really referring and dealing with tablets called the Qumran tablets that were found, right? Um, that, that's the place where they're found them, known as the Qumran tablets. And these writings, because the, the, the Jesus in the biblical sense, right, they don't, with, with all religion, you have kind of like a spiritual side to it, and then you have the man-made dogmas that go along with it. Um, the the, the man-made stuff is nothing to do with spirituality. It's just about looking good, um, you know, the people that just wear the clothes, wear the rings, wear the oils, go to the mosque or go to the church and... They're not really interested about the real development spiritually. Whereas Jesus in that story was a part of an order called the Essenes, right? The Essenes would be like the spiritual side of people who were trying to really study and learn about their spirituality. And John, John the Baptist was one of those people also that belonged to an order. And so these writings, they're giving you accounts that have been left out of the, of the Bible. They give you stories that go into things that we've spoken about, such as um, Jesus not being the character that they make out to be like. He's ne he never got married. He's all pious. And, you know, and, and yet in the Bible, there's, there are places and instances where he's ready to fight. He's telling people to, to buy swords. And um, he's married. He's had children. And... Um, We've got this, this master secret called Death, Life, Wife and Children of Jesus Christ, which goes into the question you're asking because it's amazing how sometimes I just grab books um, just randomly and the questions seem to tie into the, to the books. Um, but that, that story ties into what you're asking about. How does it tie into um, masonry? Because the the people that knew the secrets of what really took place with that whole story of Jesus not being crucified. And then, because even in the garden, when um, Mary Magdalene or Martha, when they went to, um, to the tomb, um, which again, that's a whole story about him being dead and then rising on the third day, which there's so many holes to that because if he was dead, he wouldn't, they wouldn't need to move the tombstone for him to come out because the spirit can go through, you know, go through the, the walls, right? But anyway, not to digress, um, he was dressed as a gardener or he was basically in, he was in hiding. And he told her to go and tell the people that he's not dead. Um, tell them that he's dead even though he's not dead because there was a whole plan to smuggle him out. And this is where it ties into masonry, as you say, like through the, the Knights of Templar. And these um, secrets were kept and it was organized for him to be smuggled or taken into France, right? And the, the movie, The Da Vinci Code, goes and touches on some of this, right? 
smuggled him into France, protected the secrets, and then eventually he made his way through to Egypt. Um, so it ties into masonry in that way because like the Knights Templar and certain orders, they, they are they, they're brotherhoods that belong to, you know, without going into too much detail, into, you know, what they call masonry. But even with masonry, it has its roots in ancient Egypt. Everything has its roots in ancient Egypt because Egypt was the, the center where everyone went to to learn and be taught higher sciences. If you were worthy, if you made the grade, if you went through certain rituals and, you know, then you were given certain information, information that till this day has been kept sacred and secret. So secret means to secrete it. Only when you're in certain orders, um, you know, this is why we as, you know, people that have been instructed and guided and we've studied under the great Tahuti, um, we, we get given this information, but it's, it's about you really being serious and sincere and wanting to learn because these are, these are what we call the higher mysteries, not the lesser mysteries, which became your religious dogma and um, some of the Greeks and, and, and Romans and Europeans that came into Egypt and they were initiated and given the lesser mysteries, they came back into the West and as their nature is, started to act like they had the information. And this great Tahuti was the master of mathematics, of science. You know, he's, he wrote so many books, including, as I mentioned previously, the Emerald Tablets and so on and so forth. So that's how it ties in. Um, but yeah, in terms of the pedophilia, that part now goes into when, remember the Greeks and the Romans were well known, for, especially the Greeks, for being homosexuals, right? They, don't, they didn't really promote or like women. Um, so when they were taught these, these science and initiated in ancient Egypt, um, they took some of what they were taught and perverted it, you know, and the perversion came in with their ways of life. And, you know, this is where it all ends up with, you know, like the Catholic Church and because they taught this doctrine of Jesus not having a woman and not being married and not having children. And so you have a situation where people who try to live up to being like Christ are told not to get married. And then you have a situation where you have nuns and you have, um, you know, you know, priests and people that are trying to live this life, but they can't, they have urges and so forth, and they end up subduing to these <clears throat> desires, and a lot of things take place. Um, even, you know, recently, you know, the Catholic Church had to give apologies because you find when, you know, certain things come out with priests, with, you know, um, misusing their power and, you know, young boys and things like that. So it all ties into, then that, that then goes into you know, like Hollywood and you hear all the stories that are coming out now with certain rituals and things that, you know, people like um, uh, the, the, the satan, satanic church with Anton Levy and people like that, they have rituals because all of this ties back into these extraterrestrials that they worship through religion and some of these beings, they, they like they like human meat, they, they like sacrifices and blood sacrifices and they like the adrenaline that is created in the fear of when people are frightened, especially children. And so, you know, you can do more research into this. So there's a lot, there are a lot of sinister things that go on where the, these sacrifices to these beings that feed off of these energies and adrenaline and they like that taste of the meat when it is, you know, it's almost like it tastes better to them when that energy is trapped within that flesh. I know it's a, it's a serious subject and one that, you know, is sensitive. Um, but yeah, that's all tying into, like we say, the many industries that have these perversions that, you know, do all of these rituals to these gods in order to appease them, to protect them, you know but the, the time has come when all of it has to stop, it has to go, they have to be wiped out. Hence the exposure that a lot of these practices are now becoming known.
you know. Um, so yeah, I hope that's answered your question. Does the devil, Lucifer, Satan, etc., actually exist? Again, with knowledge, you have to break each word down, right? What is a devil? See, again, the spell has people thinking there's one person that's a devil, and this person they've given it's a character with horns, um, with a pitchfork, um, is in this fictitious place called hell, um, and it's a place where you get tortured and you go to, to, to hell when you haven't made the grade or you're not a good person. And this is all re religious dogma, religious um, doctrine, right? And if you start to look at it from a factual perspective and break each word down, what is the devil? The word devil means a false accuser, right? The word Lucifer is dealing with the light of Lucifer and Lu cipher the people that are in the circle right and that ties into to saturn which gets you get the word satan which is in hebrew i mean in arabic shaitan dealing with a thing of clay clay right so they're literally telling you that um there can be many people that accuse people falsely those are devils right they can men, many people that worship lucifer or this being called lucifer who has many names, you know, um, Iblis, and his father was Tarnush. And, and, you know, in each culture, you're going to get different, different names. And so Diablo, you know, we can go on and there's many, many names. And so the trick is to make you think it's one person. Yet, in the scriptures, the devil is able to multiply and have children. These Nephilims, these beings that came down here and raped women and produce offspring. This is why it tells you that, you know, the devil's is going to have enmity with, with the woman who they refer to as Eve. But who is Eve? Because Eve will be the, the woman, right? It ties into, you know, the, the woman that, um, the first woman. Not to go all over the place and confuse you, is that, so, yes, Devils exist, Lucifer, excuse me, Lucifer exists, Satan exists, but not as in one person. It can come in many forms. It can come in a form that you least expect it because you're dealing with energy beings. You're dealing with beings on all different realms, physical, um, human. It could be anybody. It could be anybody who does devilishment is a devil. Um, and it ties into a, a race of people or beings, right? I've mentioned many times that when you start to look at the Anunnaki story, you're dealing with this being that is the son, yeah, of Nana, um, en Enlil, known as Nana. That would be one of the biggest devils. And then you go into, you know, go into religion. Any walk of life you go into, it could be at work, school, college, it could be your wife, it could be your brother, your sister, because you have entities that can utilize anything and different people. Um, you know, the movies such as The Fallen, dealing with the fallen angels, you know, um, and just, just look at the result of, or the outcome of what people are doing. And, and then, yeah, so don't be fooled that there's one person who's just, holding a pitchfork in a place called heaven that is the devil. There are many devils and that's one of the biggest, even in the movie Fallen, I think the quote was, the biggest trick the devil has ever performed is to um, convince you that he doesn't exist, right? But when yet he's walking all around you every day. We have many scrolls called Where's the Devil Today? Um, We've got many scrolls that deal with this, this, this topic of, of, of a devil or the devil. There are many devils, many children of the devil. And so they're the ones that are causing the havoc and the chaos on the planet. And, you know, you could give birth to one because you have to remember that when you're, you know, you're, you're multiplying or bringing about offspring, if your mental and your energy and everything is not correct, then what are you producing? And remember, this, this, these 
entities are pulled from the etheric realm and then take form, you know, by coming, that energy is pulled and comes through the, the phallus of the male, which gets, that energy gets put into the womb of the woman and then is grown and developed and comes out. Could be positive or negative or disagreeable and agreeable. And so it's very important to be in the right state of mind, cleaning yourself inside out, and to choose the right partner to, to, if you're going to procreate, that's what, that's the whole purpose. Procreation was done at the right time, at the right place through genetic experiments. And this is what the different Adam and Eve's, um, that was what was happening to breed out this, because remember that to breed out this negativity or these disagreeables, and they had to match different people to, to come together to produce an offspring, watch that nature, and, and then from that, you know, fix it or continue. And, and now we're being upgraded. Um, you're being upgraded because the programming teaches you to lean towards your reptilian nature, right? Which ties into some of these, you know, these just draconians and reptilian beings that have managed to get into our, our genes. And so you have three main parts to you. You have many parts, but the main part in terms of your physical is dealing with your ethereal or etheric being, which ties into the, the, the highest supreme beings. Then you have your, your reptilian nature, um, and your hat, which is tying into you, know, you being a mammal as well, because if you look at the process you go through, you come from a pure energy being to uh, being a tadpole that lives in water, and then as you're growing, you look like a gray, and then when you come out, you know, you're a mammal with all these components. So you can be transformed into a disagreeable if you lean more to your reptilian nature. This is why they push things like eating meat. Um, and a lot of people cannot stop eating meat um, or flesh um, to, to feed that aggressive side of you, that reptilian nature side of you, because you have a reptilian brain. And so if you lean more to the Natharu, which ties into the Ethereans, the pure energy being, then you're going to be able to use your mind more and not your physical, you see. So um, you're going to think correctly. You're going to manifest um, from, from, from the mental into the physical positive things that will help us elevate and, and you know, improve and change the world. Okay, was there a war between the Draconians and the Galactical Federation for the planet? There were many wars and there have been many wars and it, the war was not between the... Well, I guess you could say that the Draconians, uh, these beings, like I said, that they, you know, they come from different places, Alder Baron, they were once, you know, obviously, in the Orion, Star Constellation, they were even welcomed on the planet Risk and um, because their dying planet meant that they had to evacuate and so they were given, um, you know, um, Risk has three continents, you know, um, Donneria, Cosmusta, and uh, what's the other one? I can't remember. But anyway, the point being that they were given refuge. Um, and then because their nature, I mentioned the being Tarnush, his nature, it was like after a while, it wasn't enough to be helped and, and to share. It was, I'm going to take over. I want to take over not only the, not only the planet, but the entire galaxy and the entire, like, you know, so the war broke out and this, these wars have been going on for many, many years and there are wars, they call them Star Wars, and they get chased when they, they're beaten, they will go somewhere else and try to colonise. And so the Galactical Federation is much like here, we have the United Nations. They came together, formed alliances to deal with situations such as when you're dealing with a being that is causing havoc throughout you know, the different constellations and the different galaxies and they keep losing and then they, you know, they, they, they go somewhere else. Much like here in the, in the, on Earth, you have different countries and you will have wars between different countries. But when it becomes an international, uh, you know, situation where it's going to affect everyone, then you have things like World War I, World War II, and then, you know, even though then you'll have different nations coming together, like in the case of trying to stop Hitler, 
you know, and his mission of taking over the world. So you, the United Nations will be formed to have alliances because together they can fight off the enemy much easier. This is what's happening now with what they're trying to do with the, you know, the Ukraine and the, um, the Russian war where you have, you know, the United Nations through America and Biden and so forth trying to support Ukraine against, um, you know, Russia. And then you have alliances being formed with like China and so on. We've broken down, you know, and this is important because the day and time we're living in, anything could happen and these wars can actually escalate to a point where it can affect everyone on the planet. So, yeah, so that's what the Draconians um, had to be put in check by the, the Galactical Federation who meet to discuss how they're going to deal with, like I said, in the case of getting rid of these Adamites um, who were basically given, they were trying to get an extension for, of another thousand years from the, you know, the 6,000 years to 7,000, but it was rejected. And so now, you know, we reach a point where they're being, um, being wiped out. And so that's where, you know, these alliances and, um, yeah. I hope that's answered your question. Uh, what do you think about Tahuti, a former follower and YouTuber claiming Dr. York shapeshifted into a small child on the Killer Priest podcast? Um, again, that may, may be misinterpreted because if you read the, the book I, I actually um, posted on um, the last video, the, the, the Tahuti video, go and watch that. Um, it's called Thoughts Tahuti Has Returned. Um, there's a book I mentioned called My Brother the Extraterrestrial, where in that book, the same account you're talking about will be given, but not in the way that it's coming across here. Um, different people, excuse me, different people have had experiences and encounters with him and they relayed their experience in the book, My Brother the Extraterrestrial, where they will tell you that they've seen him um, maybe like really tall and in another time they see him quite short. And so that shows you that for someone that is able to change their molecular structure in that way, um, you know, that's kind of what people are referring to as shape-shifting. Um, but yeah, different people have had different experiences and encounters with this being. So um, when you say, what do I think about Tahuti, a former follower, a lot of times people that say former follower, even that in itself, Dr. York has never claimed or want anybody to follow him. <laughs> People choose by their own will whether or not they want to accept his teaching or accept Wu Sabat. And when you say former, that means at some point you decided no longer to subscribe to the teaching. And you have a lot of, um, you know, disgruntled people that have all kinds of reasons um, personal reasons a lot of the times it may be a situation with somebody else and unfortunately Dr. York being the prominent figure gets a lot of the slack um, even down to the the lies and the accusations which were perpetrated by other people but obviously um, you know he has been incarcerated wrongfully and falsely and um, as time goes on more and more evidence comes out and he will be exonerated and he will be free. Um, and he's still alive and the story is not over. You know, you're watching a movie and some people think, you know, we've, we're already at the, at the end with the, sub, you know, the titles. And no, we're not. It's still, it's still ongoing and the, the fight continues and we are not going to stop um, until he is released. Yeah, so I'm not going to comment on um, that particular person's comments because, you know, I haven't seen it. But I know of that incident from the book. You spoke about getting stuck or trapped on a certain realm. What is the proof or evidence for this? Or is it just belief if it can't be proven? Okay, so again, like anything, right? No one is asking you to believe anything or accept anything. 
It's entirely up to you. Now, we have somebody who we call a master teacher who has given us information on things on the spiritual realms as well as the physical. So yes, some things, some teachings, we accept based on his information and obviously we compare it to other teachings or what everybody else is teaching. However, um, you're right that if you personally haven't experienced something, it may be a belief for you. But if everyone you know about talks about other realms, meaning that scientifically you can take, you can do experiments like I've done in the past with when I've explained about taking ice, transforming it into liquid, transforming it into ether or vapor to ether. And if you can see that happening and then you apply that to you as a physical being, knowing that you're composed of the same elements. And so, and most people will say, I'm here now, I'm animated, I'm talking, I'm moving. At some point, something happens where this physical body, right, is no longer here. People travel and do things like astral project, visit different realms, talk about it. I'm talking about different people across the world, different cultures, different races. And so we, we have a thing where we say use three tests, evidence, reason and experience to deduce or come to a conclusion whether something makes sense and is correct to you or not. If you haven't had proof, then yeah, don't believe it and um, wait till you get the proof. But there is overwhelming and enough evidence to explain that there are different realms and there are people who do not cross over that, that have visited loved ones. There are people with abilities to personify these entities, disembodied spirits, etc. Um, so yes, um, this is what he teaches. Dr. York has taught through many books, um, you know, of these other realms. And many of us have experienced these other realms. So yes, it's down to you. Um, yeah, I guess, I hope that's answered the question. Um, speak of Rashad Jamal a little bit. Do you know him? Do you know of his situation? I do, but again, like the question, what, what would you like me to speak on? Uh, there are many people who are incarcerated. I mean, just ordinary people that have been incarcerated or that are, you know what I mean, accused of things um, unjustly. And my thing is justice should be served um, to, but a lot of people don't know the word, the secret meaning of the word justice is just us. Um, the people who put the legal system together and how, how unfair it really is. Um, yeah, there are many, many soldiers, um, fighters, freedom fighters um, for our liberation and so forth. So, um, you know, I can only, yeah, just, I don't, I don't know the entire details of everything about his case and what he's doing, but, um, you know, there are, there are principalities in higher places and forces that um, try to suppress and keep people down from because what it means is they're going to lose or their benefits, you know, they benefit from people being ignorant, they benefit from the divisions, they benefit from the materialistic mindset, they benefit from you being suppressed in terms of your knowledge because then your labour force, there are many, many aspects as to why they would keep certain people down, you know, um, but the awakening is happening um, and, you know, we've got to focus on those that are woke, and try and help those who are not. But ultimately, yeah, that's what it is. Um, I'm going to take a few more. Wow, the time goes so quickly. Greetings, teacher. Thank you for answering my questions. Please, I am confused. What exactly is the devil spoken of in the sixth person? Mr. York said in another interview, said that the devil is the white man. He said also that the serpent, the devil is symbolic. Please explain. Okay, so I already explained about the devil, but yes, in terms of 
like I said, you have the devil on all different levels. The physical manifestation of the devil on the planet is what you're referring to as um, Dr. York saying the white man. He's not the first person to say that. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad was saying that. And it's not based on just the fact of the skin color. You have to think about the actions and the results of the nature of what a being does. And if you go back in time and look at what they've done in going to other countries the, and colonizing the wars, the diseases that are spread. I'm talking about, you know, when you go to the Native American history, you go to the African history, you go to the, the Japanese, you know, with the bombing of Hiroshima, Nagasaki, you know, there's so many instances throughout time that will show a person's nature. Um, when we're talking about the serpent, that would be from the biblical aspect of the Bible where they say that Adam and Eve came across a, a being they called the serpent and they make this whole thing about it being a snake because of the word serpent but in the actual language it's, there is no, it's not a serpent it's, it's referred to as a whisperer, right? Nakas or Nakash that's what the word says and that is a whisperer somebody that was speaking and talking to Eve because how can a snake talk? A snake, a real snake cannot talk. So you're talking about this being and this character who in reality was Ningish Dizza, right? And, um, you know, there are different names for him, but, you know, some people even called him Tahuti. And this being was telling the truth because he told them that if they ate of the fruit, which is symbolic for learning and having knowledge, right, to know good from evil. By having that knowledge, your eyes will be open. And these beings, these reptilian beings, these Anunnaki beings that were trying to suppress and dumb you down, didn't want you to know this information. And so that's what they're talking about in that sense, in terms of the serpent. And then the last thing um, that the Sobe is saying that it's symbolic because there wasn't a real serpent, right? So I hope that's helped you to, to you know what I mean? Cl clarify what you're saying or you're confused about. Thank you so much for your knowledge and insight from the master teacher in this time and age. We need to know the truth. Absolutely. Mr. Yard Lopez, 100%. That's why we do this. Did you have a community? If so, how could one visit? Do you have a community? If so, how could one visit? Yes, we have communities all over the world, but unfortunately we've been dispersed. Um, the best thing to do is go, I don't know where, you're, where you are, but go to the websites I've given. Um, they're in the comments as well. And see where your nearest location is. Um, visit the store and then um, they'll, you know, they'll let you know how you can get involved with the community. So that's unitedsabeansworldwide.com. Go to contact us and look at the stores um, and then the chat.co.uk. Also, um, you can join us and then, you know, get to know and be involved with the community. Uh, good afternoon. As always, very good and important information from Charlotte NC. One love to all. One love, Valerie8548. What is your status in life when it comes, when it comes what you do in life and do you are in your community? Um, again, that's very open. Um, yeah, I mean, I have several skills. Um, I'm actively involved in the community. Um, yeah, I have a background in technology, in IT, in music production. Um, yeah, business. I, I'm quite, you know, I have a lot of different skills. I teach. Um, yeah, hope that's helped you. Um, who 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 you are in your community? Um, I don't fully know. I'm just a brother, um, just doing my part as a part of the community. We all teach each one, teach one. We help to build, spread wool sabbat, and um, yeah. I hope that helped. Uh, Rahu Bat. I'm gonna take a couple more, and then we're wrapping it up. Rahu Bat. I'd like to know about the creation story or making of 
the Nostaru, the black race, and briefly on the creation of other races and their various timelines. Br um, uh, I'm thinking your brother, get hold of the book, um, the many books we mentioned, and get hold of the book, Fast Track, Your Spiritual and Conscious Journey, because we outlined that. I've got videos on TikTok that explain about creation and how we came about, but we are the children of the Natharu. The Natharu are the highest beings, the supreme beings. They've actually elevated to a point where they're pure energy beings and they can actually personify at will and, and lower their vibration and take on, you know, forms in the physical. They seeded this planet um, originally in, and by putting the, the genes from them in a capsule and um, germinating the water of this planet known as Patar Nun, when it was purely a water planet. And they, they did that by inserting that into a dolphin or a Vulcan being that today people call a Vulcan, um, or they're called dolphins. They, they were in the waters of, um, of, of this planet and through time, those, those um, capsules were melted and they germinated the water and that's the first seeding of life on this planet which evolved from the water onto land. It's a big story and um, other races were then kind of like evolved from, from the original race and then you have extraterrestrials, different types of extraterrestrials coming to the planet and that, during that time the planet has had many many evolutions and life forms and um, over time you know, different beings came here and they created other hybrids. Okay, I think that that is telling me the time is time is up. So um, yeah, I hope that's answered that question. But we can go into more detail if you're more specific because that's a, a very broad question again. All right, uh, I'm going to take one last question. Oh, the part was you were saying the various timelines. So the Natharu, um, they don't have a birth date because, again, when you're dealing with time, time is an illusion that has been constructed for us on this time belt, which deals with how the planet rotates around the sun. And we get like 365 days. It fluctuates because sometimes, um, you know, because of the, the way the, the elliptical orbit is, you get more days with the construct of time. So time is an illusion, but the Natharu, the Negroids, we have no birth date because every time they go backwards to find where we are, there's, there's still more and it keeps going further and f further back. You know, they're found in things billions of years. Um, the, the, the Fluga rods were like 8,400 years old. Um, and then the Adamites are like 6,000 years old and this is where you know the biblical accounts everyone that teaches about you know from a european or a eurocentric perspective they try to tie everything to six thousand years this is why they will say like the sphinx was only two thousand five hundred years um everything was always just within six thousand years even when you go on tours to egypt that's what you know a lot of the guides they try to stick to the six thousand years but scientists have proven that you know, the Sphinx aligned with, you know, like the constellations 10,500 years ago and it was eroded through rain and water and stuff like that. So they know that the 2,500 years is not the correct timeline. Even the pyramids themselves go back millions of years because they only try to tie it into, you know, that 10,500 years. But I hope that's given you... The timeline is in our book. I give the whole timeline from like 76 trillion years ago all the way up until today. You know, like the sun, our, the, our sun, the creation of our sun 93 billion years ago. The crash of Nibiru was like um, 24 billion years ago. Um, and then you have the, you know, the evolution of different species all the way up until now, the year 2024. So get hold of the book and you have all that information at your fingertips. Um, greetings and much love. Has it been a significant decline of certain medical conditions such as diabetes, arthritis, hypertension amongst people in Wusabak culture? 
Has it been a significant decline of certain myths? Yeah, of course, because this is what like the information, the knowledge does. It, it makes you know what to put into your body. So yes, things like diabetes, arthritis, and because a lot of this is caused from like sugars and salt and uh, meats, um, yeah, which, which, you know, they, we, this, this is what happens in our community. You can look at, we have a part of that called Diagnosis of the Races. Um, get hold of that because it, it literally tells you, you can, the outcome um, in terms of looking at each race, looking at their elders and seeing what they suffer with in terms of health issues and then you as a, a younger person or someone coming up, if you avoid what they eat and you can avoid those, those health issues, you know, um, a lot of rice, for example, which turns into glucose and glucose is really dealing with sugar. So when you're starting to deal with, you know, um, diabetes and things like that, you know, this is what happens. So yes, a lot of us who have um, changed our lifestyle in terms of our diet, etc., um, it's by way of Wusabat. So you're right that there is a definite decline in those conditions. I'm gonna try. Yeah, I'm gonna do like eight more minutes because um, I've gone over by half an hour, but I might as well round it up. What would happen if we put our blood on our ancestral altar during prayer meditation? Right. Again, we do not use any type of blood in any of our rituals. This, this is what I'm saying. The blood is is what these entities gravitate to. This is what they feed off of. And this is why the blood sacrifices, even if you go back and look at in 2015 in Mecca, a lot of people died when they went to, into Hajj, right? And there are entities that feed off of blood. So this is, it's also spilled into like Yoruba and Santeria and, and these aspects are tying into these, these religious um, books tying into these extraterrestrial beings that like blood sacrifices. So we don't deal with that um, because you're just conjuring certain entities and spirits, right? So when you say what will happen if we put our blood on our sensual altar during prayer meditation, that's not, that's not a Nuapian practice. So I don't know where you're getting that from. It sounds like a, something from Yoruba or something like that. And I already explained the original way that Yoruba is not what is today. That was dealing with ancestral worship, in term, not even worship, but more of uh, a recognition and giving reverence to our ancestors. And it was more in terms of nature as well, animist. That's what the original Yoruba practice, and that's part of our culture. However, it, it has been infiltrated and the practices that people are, like they feel like they have to sacrifice something to these entities to get what they're trying to achieve. It may be like kill a chicken, sprinkle blood, take this thing or take a, a piece of cloth or something. There's some way, shape or form where they ask you these, you know, these, these um, native doctors practicing these things. And if you trace it back, it goes back to these disagreeable entities and extraterrestrial beings. So we do not advocate putting blood on your, on your altar. Um, why, was why, was, why was divide and conquer built into our DNA as humans if we were to ultimately grow consciously and spiritually as beings that kind of defeats a purpose, no? Um, that's a statement you're making that um, divide and conquer was built into our DNA. Um, it, it can, d your DNA can be reprogrammed. And this is what we're saying, that the divide and conquer strategy was by these beings. And we can go all the way back to Genesis chapter 11 or what people talk about, uh, you know, the Tower of Babel, that whole story of Nimrod and being able to unite the people from first of all changing their tones and the language they were speaking because the divide and conquer thing came by way of the Anunnaki like Enlil and Enki and Anu and these Anunnaki that were basically separating people by 
diversifying their tongue because when, when they came down and they saw, they had to come down to see what was going on because they weren't able to influence the people anymore from Nibiru by sending down, you know, um, messages telepathically. Um, and, and this is what happens when you start to take control of your own mind by studying and information you put into your mind, you start to make correct decisions. So when they realized that these people, through the guidance of Nimrod or Sargon, were able to, because he went, he, he went to Africa, right? Remember, he was the son of Kush, and he went to Africa, and he, he learned his own language, and he learned, you know, the culture of Wusabat, and he came back, and he started to, to organize and teach his people that, and they were able to unite, work together, and build this structure, which was which he, he was able to use to communicate. He wanted to communicate directly with, he didn't want any intercessors or intermediate um, people in between him and the Most High. And he wanted to con communicate directly with him. So he was building this, this tower or antenna to be able to, a radio, a receiver, to be able to communicate directly himself. But when they got wind of that, Enki and Enlil, Enlil came down and he wanted to basically, yeah, stop that because then they just follow instructions and they just do what they're told so it was not built into our dna that was something that got programmed and in today that's what's happened with you know like the european and uh, you know the beings that have divided us and trying to make us think we're different when knowing that our collective unity coming together means we can do great things and we can work together and even when you look at power structures they they kind of like arranging a pyramid shape where the small uh, percentage at the top rule the masses and that's through media, misinformation, religions and fear and all these kind of tactics that they utilize to separate people. But if the people came together, they will be able to overthrow any government. Not that I'm advocating any such action, I'm just saying that the masses yeah, are controlled by the few when really when you look at the power, it doesn't, it doesn't add up. The masses should not be able to be controlled by the few. It should be the other way around. And once you break away from the chains mentally, then you can free yourself physically. All right, um, two minutes left, so I'm gonna take one more question. Um, be careful of folks who think they got the answers to all questions. Like no one is a child here. That's again, this is the kind of things, it's actually ironic that somebody will make that statement and expect everyone to accept what they're saying, um, but then tell you not to accept what somebody else is saying. We never claim to have all the answers to all questions. We say, ask us anything. Big difference. And this is how subtle this can be. And this person um, writing in full capitals, which is known as shouting um, in social media, like, no one is a child here. Like, you can't speak for everyone, number one. And um, I think this is going to be my last question. Um, be careful of folks who think they got the answer to all questions. I don't have the answers to all questions. We know somebody who does. And how do you prove that? It's by asking us questions. And all the questions that have been put to us, we've answered them. Instances where we're not able to answer a question, we tell you we're going to look and maybe get it answered by someone who we know has the answers. And that's for you to put us to the test. And you can read the comments and see how many people have been happy with the questions that we have answered. And it's 1.30 exactly. On that note, I want to thank you all for your questions. Keep them coming. That's how you learn. Remember to subscribe, to like your question so that your question gets moved to the top. Remember, we want to launch this documentary. Man, I've seen it in, May, in the making. It's amazing. If you want to see it, gives you a, a good insight to Wusabat. Um, I won't give away too much, but subscribe. Get us to 100k subscribers and that will be released and that will open the key and turn the key to open the door to much, much more that you have yet to know. And um, until the next episode, 
love, peace and unity and share, share, share. Wadu.